Many people are interested in ancient structures and technologies, but what they often fail to realize is that these innovations did not stand independent of the environment in which they existed. Giant megalithic walls and large moats like the one surrounding Angkor Wat were not just created to keep invading armies out or for decorative purposes, but also to deter a diverse range of wild creatures. It was necessary for ancient people to build structures that were not only large and well fortified, but also hidden and isolated. Fortified complexes high in the mountains, such as Machu Picchu, would be necessary to protect inhabitants from a plethora of creatures, both friendly and hostile. In this video, we are going to explore some of the megafauna that the ancient peoples would have had to contend with and fortify against. The environment in the distant past was drastically different compared to the Earth we know. Environmental scientists, geologists, and religious leaders have even reached a consensus on what the environment used to be like. Geologists use evidence, known as proxy records, to study Earth's climate in the distant past. Some examples of proxy records include air pockets inside of amber and air pockets inside of ice. Amber is created as resin is secreted from the damaged portions of trees, and it hardens into a rock-like substance to protect the wounded tree. Pockets of air become trapped inside of the resin as it pours down the bark, preserving the air exactly as it was at the time that it was trapped, similar to the process of suspended animation. Scientists are able to extract the air from inside of these pockets, and analyze what the atmosphere had been like at the time that the air had become trapped inside of the amber. Ice cores from areas such as Antarctica and Greenland, where thick ice has accumulated miles deep, are also used as proxy records. Small pockets of ancient air were trapped inside of the ice as they accumulated. Scientists are able to analyze the air inside of ice, as with amber, to determine what the air had been like at the time that the air was trapped inside of these substances, since the air remains preserved when it's encapsulated. These air pockets in amber and ice have revealed that the levels of oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere had once been as high as 35%, compared to the 21% oxygen in the air currently. Carbon dioxide levels were also five times higher than they are now which enabled vegetation to thrive since they breathe in carbon dioxide. Furthermore, the air pressure and density across the entire world was significantly higher long ago. Another example of proxy records used to determine the Earth's ancient atmosphere are the fossilized remains of ancient organisms. Fossil palm tree stumps have been discovered in Alaska, and fossilized crocodiles were uncovered in the Arctic Circle revealing that it was once much more tropical, even far north. Traces of an ancient rainforest were also found in Antarctica. Even the Sahara Desert was entirely green, until approximately 4,500 years ago, according to the Smithsonian Magazine. Geologists have studied the fluctuating ratios of oxygen-16 to oxygen-18 isotopes in the oceans, compared to those in the fossil shells of ancient marine organisms to determine the average temperature of the Earth in the past. Shells are made from molecules in the surrounding water, which contain a specific ratio of oxygen-16 to oxygen-18, depending on the temperature at the time that the shell was created. Temperature fluctuations cause the oxygen isotope ratios in the oceans to fluctuate, but the ratios preserved in the fossils of marine organisms remain preserved independently, making them serve as records for determining the ocean's temperature at the time that the shell was created. By determining the ocean's temperatures in the past in this way, scientists can determine the temperature of the Earth's atmosphere as well. Using these methods, it has been determined that in the distant past, the entire Earth had an average temperature of 73 degrees Fahrenheit, or 22.8 degrees Celsius, compared to the average temperature of the entire Earth currently, which is only 57 degrees Fahrenheit, or 13.9 degrees Celsius. Winters in the ancient past were mild and wet, 
rarely getting colder than below 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius. There was also only a single, large continent. Due to there being a single continent, there were less ocean currents than there are now, and also less winds. This kept the temperature of the entire landmass consistently the same temperature, so there were no extremely cold or hot regions as there are currently. There was also a dense layer of moisture in the atmosphere. Even though the humidity was high, the water vapor was generally not so thick that it could be visibly seen, like fog. The skies were clear enough to where the sun, moon, and stars could still easily be seen. The dense humidity and warmth did not hinder breathing, though, because the oxygen levels were much higher and the increased air pressure enabled the lungs to take in much more air with less effort. The ancient atmosphere's condition was much like that of a hyperbaric chamber, which is used for therapy. In these chambers, the air pressure is doubled and nearly pure oxygen is pumped in. Humidity is also provided by moisturizing the oxygen with water or by aerosoling the water into fine particles and adding it to the oxygen, which is necessary because oxygen can dry out the skin if the air is not also humid. Since the lungs must have lower air pressure than the outside air to breathe air in, having the outside air be twice as pressurized makes it take only half as much effort to breathe. To further illustrate this point, the air pressure lowers significantly before there's a storm. This causes people with asthma, COPD, and other respiratory issues to have trouble breathing. Higher elevations also cause this effect in which the air is much less dense, and therefore thinner. There's less oxygen, and it's also much colder. And these conditions cause mountain climbers to also have trouble breathing. The increased oxygen, administered inside of a hyperbaric chamber, is more efficiently transported to organs in the patient's body, which helps the body to repair itself. These findings also imply that wounds would have healed much faster in Earth's ancient climate and that organisms would have been much healthier and stronger due to the increased oxygen levels. The density of the moisture in the air made creatures also more buoyant, in the same way that people are more buoyant when standing in water. Therefore, it would have been somewhat easier to jump, just like it's easier to jump when standing in water, and it would have relieved some of the gravitational pressure, making modern issues like back and knee pain practically non-existent. These factors enabled animals like the Quetzalcoatlus northropi to fly, even though it has too narrow of wings for its body size, to fly in the modern atmosphere, which is much less dense. Another notable side effect of the ancient atmosphere is that it enabled creatures to grow much larger and more abundantly than their modern counterparts. Due to the increased oxygen for animals and humidity and carbon dioxide for plants, both were able to survive and become enormous compared to modern flora and fauna. The abundance of vegetation for plant-eating animals to consume also enabled them to grow larger and survive long enough to produce offspring without having to compete for resources. Furthermore, the buoyancy effect produced by the atmosphere's increased density also made it so that larger animals did not feel the burden of weight as much as modern animals would if they were as large. Modern experiments have proven that the ancient atmospheric conditions led to organisms growing significantly larger than they do under current atmospheric conditions. A researcher named John Vandenbrooks placed dragonflies into one of three different environments upon birth, either 12% oxygen, which is about half of the oxygen concentration of the Earth's current atmosphere, 21% oxygen, which is what it is currently, or 31% oxygen which is approximately 50% more oxygen than the concentration of oxygen in Earth's current atmosphere at ground level. The dragonflies placed into the 31% oxygen environments grew to be over 15% larger than those in the 21% oxygen environment. The dragonflies in the 12% oxygen condition grew to be over 20% smaller than those in the 21% oxygen environment. The dragonflies in the highest of the three oxygen conditions would have likely grown much larger if the experiment had also raised the air pressure and increased the subject's nutritional consumption to more accurately replicate the ancient environment. 
A 2013 experiment conducted by two New Zealand scientists determined that there was a higher than expected positive correlation between fish growth and oxygen consumption rate. For example, the fish in the 6 mg per liter dissolved oxygen condition, on average grew to be about 75% larger than the fish placed into the 2 mg per liter dissolved oxygen condition, which again shows that having more oxygen enables organisms to grow larger. Fossilized remains of ancient vegetation also reveals that plants grew to be far larger in the ancient past. Modern geologists have discovered the petrified remains of trees, which show how large ancient plants grew compared to those today. In Utah, a flowering tree called the Paraphylanthoxylon was found collapsed, petrified, and buried under a thick layer of dry soil. Based on the findings, it was determined that the tree had been over 53 meters, or 176 feet tall, when it was alive. This is over twice as tall as the largest tree in Utah today. In Thailand, the petrified remains of a tree related to the Kumpashioxalon elegans were uncovered. This tree was estimated to have been over 99 meters, or 328 feet tall, when it was alive. The Kumpashioxalon tree only grows to be around 40 meters, or 131 feet on average nowadays, making the ancient version of the tree almost three times larger. Mushrooms were also able to grow much taller in the distant past. A species of fungi called prototaxites were discovered to have grown over 8 meters or 26 feet tall, and these prototaxites towered over almost every animal. The largest species of fern in modern times, called the Cyathea australis, can grow to be up to 65 feet tall or 19 meters. But the fossilized remains of far older ferns were found to be well over 30 meters or 100 feet tall, which is almost twice as large as a modern fern. Horsetails were also able to grow to be around 90 feet or 27.4 meters tall on average in the ancient environment, whereas today they only grow to be one foot or a third of a meter tall. With plants being able to grow so much larger and also reproduce more effectively, there was much more food for plant-eating animals to consume. With there being an abundance of vegetation, animals had access to enough nutrition to develop as much as possible. When creatures do not receive enough vitamins, minerals, and calories, they cannot grow to be as large, and their bones, muscles, and organs are much frailer. For example, around 130 BC, the horses in China became extremely frail and small because the soil there lacks selenium, and therefore, the horses did not receive enough of the nutrient to grow properly, since the plants they ate that grew from the soil did not contain selenium. This made the horses too weak to support the weight of a Chinese soldier. Another example is that the children who grew up during the Great Depression were deficient in vitamins, minerals, and calories due to the lack of food. This led to them growing to be significantly smaller, and as adults, they were on average 2 to 3 inches shorter than the average person currently, regardless of gender, and also around 25 pounds lighter. The much higher oxygen and air pressure of the ancient environment also supply the animal's organs with more oxygen. Extra oxygen helps to stimulate the release of growth factor substances and stem cells that enable healing. Larger animals need more oxygen to live because they have more cells in their bodies that require oxygen to perform cellular respiration. Insects have small external openings in the exoskeleton, called spiracles, that enable air to enter. The spiracles lead to an internal system of tubes called tracheae. Through these systems, the oxygen in the outside air enters the bug and encompasses the bug's organs. The greater the air pressure outside the bug, the more efficiently the oxygen in the air pushes through the spiracles and into the bug. Bugs in the ancient past were able to grow so much larger due to the increased air pressure pushing more oxygen into their bodies through their spiracles. Animals of all types, not just bugs, grew to be far larger when the Earth's climate was more rich in the past. In order to demonstrate how large ancient creatures really were, I have created the following scale representations to illustrate the size of these ancient megafauna compared to their smaller, modern counterparts and humans. 
I strove to make these representations as accurate as possible, based on available data and fossil records. For most of these representations, I have used Indiana Jones, as portrayed by Harrison Ford, who is around 6 foot 4 inches tall to the top of the hat, and Lara Croft, as portrayed by Alicia Vikander, who is 5 foot 7 inches tall, as a reference. Many YouTube channels and other sources claim these creatures to have been far larger than they really were, just to impress viewers. The goal of this channel is to determine the truth about the Earth's past, and therefore, I will be striving to be as accurate as possible when showing the size of these creatures that used to exist, which is why I created my own representations, instead of using pre-existing ones, which are often inaccurate. The largest land mammal on Earth currently is the African bush elephant, standing at over 10 feet tall, or 3 meters on average. However, their ancient counterparts, Paleoloxodon nematicus, grew to be even larger, at over 16 feet or 5 meters tall at the shoulder, and even taller at the head. Rhinos are another type of large animal, similar to the elephant. The largest modern rhinoceros stands at around 6 feet or 1.8 meters tall at the shoulder. The older relative of the rhino, called the Paraceratherium transrelicum, was just under 16 feet or 5 meters tall at the shoulders and almost three times as tall as the modern rhino. Another ancestor of the rhino, called the Elasmotherium caucasicum, grew to be around 3 meters or 10 feet tall at the shoulders. The horn of the Elasmotherium caucasicum in this image shows the lower estimate of their horn size. But fossils have shown that the horn of this ancient rhino could grow to be over 9 feet or 2.7 meters long at the largest. A modern rhino's horn can only grow to be around 12 inches, or 0.3 meters, which is nine times shorter than the potential length of the Elasmotherium caucasicum's horn. Another ancestor of the rhino, called the Megacerops, stood at an impressive eight and a half feet tall at the shoulders, which is about a third taller than the modern rhino. The remains of the Megacerops have been found in North America and Canada, which is very far from the current habitat of rhinos, in Africa, India, and Indonesia. Moose are thought to be one of the largest and most daunting creatures a person could encounter in the wilderness. An ancient ancestor of the moose, as well as of deer and elk, named the Megalaceros, has 12 foot wide antlers, and stood around 7 feet tall at the shoulders, reaching a height of 11 feet tall at the top of the antlers with the head raised, making the Megaloceros significantly taller than the average moose, and certainly larger than any modern elk or deer. The remains of the Megaloceros have been found primarily in Europe and Asia. Another type of mammal, very different in appearance from deer, are apes. The tallest species of ape recorded in recent times is a silverback gorilla that was found in Alibongo, northern Kivu, in 1938, which stood at 6 foot 4 inches tall. The tallest currently living ape is the eastern gorilla, which stands at around 5 foot 6 inches tall. A distant relative of the gorilla, named the Gigantopithecus blacki, stood at over 11 feet, or 3.4 meters, tall at the head making it twice as tall as any modern ape. The remains of the Gigantopithecus blackie have actually been discovered mainly in China, most notably in the Haizhang Cave in southeast China. The largest pure species of big cat in modern times is the Siberian tiger, which stands at around 3 feet tall at the shoulder. An earlier species of big cat, called the Smilodon populator, or more commonly known as the saber-toothed tiger, was over 3.3 feet tall at the shoulder on average, and it had far larger muscles than tigers do. Wolves are another modern predator that are feared by humans. The size of the largest species of wolf alive presently, the timber wolf, only reaches 2.5 feet tall at the shoulder. However, an ancient species of wolf that lived long ago, called the dire wolf, grew to be over three and a half feet tall, which is around a third taller than the largest modern wolves. A pack of dire wolves could even take down a mammoth, 
so they were definitely capable of taking down some of the largest ancient megafauna. A surprisingly large ancient animal is the megatherium, which is an ancestor of the modern-day sloth. While sloths only reach about two and a half feet in length, the megatherium was around 12 feet, or 3.6 meters tall. Standing on its hind legs, it could easily dwarf a modern elephant. The fact that sloths would have shrunk in size so much shows how much the environment has changed since the time that they were larger. The decline in vegetation from the ancient times to now has diminished the sloth's food resources so that only the smaller ones were able to get enough food to survive. Another animal that lives in the same region that sloths do currently is the capybara. The modern capybara only grows to be two feet tall at the largest. On the other hand, an ancestor of the capybara, called the Josefa artigasia, grew to be about five feet tall, making it the same height as the average human, and is remarkably larger than the capybara that are alive currently. An animal around the same size as the capybara, the wombat, had a distant relative that was even larger than the capybara's ancient ancestor. This creature is called the Diprotodon, and it stood at over 6 feet, or 1.8 meters, at the shoulder, making it the same size as a modern rhino, and over three times taller than a current-day wombat. Armadillos are another relatively small, modern animal, reaching just over a foot in height. Their ancient counterpart, the Glyptodon, is over five feet tall, however, making it five times larger than armadillos. Camels are around 6 feet, or 1.8 meters, tall. While this makes them taller than many humans, they're still short enough that they can be ridden. The ancestor of the modern camel, named the Titanotylopus, was twice as tall, reaching almost 12 feet, or 3.6 meters, in height, making it very impractical for a human to ride without a ladder. Camels are also known to be somewhat aggressive, especially during rutting season. The double-sized Titanotylopus would therefore be a very undesirable animal to approach for a ride. The remains of the Titanotylopus have been found primarily in North America, very far from the current habitat of camels in the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. Warthogs are also known to be very aggressive, especially when confronted. They're two to three feet tall on average, which is about the same height as a wolf while a modern warthog is a reasonable source of concern. The ancient ancestor of the warthog was so terrifying that it's often called a hell pig. This giant warthog, named the Diodon Shoshonensis, was about 6 feet, or 1.8 meters tall, at the shoulder, and even taller at the head. These creatures were actually abundant in present-day North America in the past, even though warthogs currently reside primarily in Africa with the only ones in North America now being present due to the unauthorized release of African warthogs. Another primarily African animal, the hyena, is a smaller creature that hunts most effectively in packs. They're generally two and a half feet tall, making them fairly short. The larger ancestor of the hyena, called the Dinocrocuta, was over two times larger, standing at about five feet or 1.5 meters tall at the shoulder. Bears are known to be large creatures, especially when standing on their hind legs. The largest modern bear is the Kodiak bear, which is about 10 feet tall, or 3 meters, when standing on its hind legs. However, an ancient ancestor of bears, called the Arctotherium, stood at over 14 feet tall, or 4.3 meters, when standing on its hind legs which is almost a third taller than the Kodiak bear. The remains of the Arctotherium have been found primarily in Argentina, despite their name making it sound as if they had lived primarily in the Arctic, which is not the case. Many species of fish in the ancient past also reached much larger than modern lengths. An armored, toothless fish called the Dunkelosteus reached lengths of over 20 feet or 6 meters long, Another species of fish, called the coelacanth, was believed to have gone extinct 80 million years ago, until one was discovered in 1938. It had
has been confirmed that there are at least 500 coelacanths in the wild, as of 1994. Coelacanths are large fish, measuring at around 6.5 feet or 2 meters long. There's actually an ancient relative of the coelacanth, called the Mawsonia gigas, which is over 20 feet long, making it over 4 times larger than the coelacanth. No living specimens of the Mawsonia gigas have been discovered yet, but just as the coelacanth was thought to be extinct until it was found living, there's no way to know if the Mawsonia gigas or any of the other supposedly extinct animals in this video are really extinct. When gorillas were first described to Europeans, they thought that they were mythical creatures. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, scientists discover approximately 18,000 new species of plants and animals every single year. A study in the scientific journal PLOS Biology by Camillo Mora admits that the vast majority of species on Earth remain unknown to science. Scientists have estimated that there could be around 8.7 million species of plants and animals in existence. However, only around 1.2 million species have been identified and documented so far, most of which are insects. This means that millions of other organisms could possibly remain a complete mystery. The largest ancient fish ever discovered is called the Leedsichthys problematicus and is over 90 feet long or 27 meters. The largest fish currently alive is the whale shark, which holds a record of only being 61 feet or 18.6 meters in length, making it a third smaller than the largest ancient fish. Another species of extinct fish of a similar size to the Leedsichthys problematicus is the megalodon, which ranged in size from 58 feet long to 82 feet long, or 17 to 25 meters. The largest living shark is approximately 16 feet long, or about 5 meters, which is much smaller than even the smallest megalodon. The jaws of the megalodon are so large that a person can easily stand in between them. A modern great white shark would be a small snack to a megalodon, Keep in mind that whales are actually considered to be mammals, not fish, which is why their size cannot be compared to fish, such as sharks, megalodons, or the lead sickness problematicus. Another large mammal that dwells underwater is the manatee. Manatees are on average 11 feet long, or 3.3 meters. The distant relative of the manatee, called the stellar sea cow, is three times larger than the modern manatee reaching lengths of 30 feet long, which is over 9 meters. Piranha fish are commonly feared due to their sharp teeth and aggressive nature. They're only a few inches long on average, though, with the largest modern piranhas reaching sizes of about 1.5 feet. But an ancestor of the modern piranhas, named the Mega Piranha, commonly grew to be over 3 feet long which is twice as large as the biggest piranhas around today. If enormous sharks and piranhas were not enough to make you not want to swim in ancient waters, these next examples will surely frighten you. Giant, bug-like creatures lived in the ancient oceans. Some reached over 3 feet long, which is about 1 meter, and others reached over 6 feet, or 1.8 meters, long. Examples include the Omnidin Zamplis, which grew to be 3.3 feet or 1 meter long, Agirocasis bemulae, which grew to be over 7 feet or 2 meters long, Jacolopterus renaniae, which grew to be an enormous 8.2 feet or 2.5 meters long, and Megalograptus, which reached lengths of 5.5 feet or 1.7 meters. Giant underwater isopods that are found deep in the Atlantic Ocean currently grow to be up to a foot and a half long, which is still very large for a modern bug-like creature, but tiny compared to some of these ancient sea bugs. These modern giant isopods are so large due to deep sea gigantism, which results from the increased pressure and increase in dissolved oxygen concentrations in the deep sea. Animals such as the giant squid, despite their status as a legendary creature, 
are also real creatures. Deep sea gigantism can cause the giant squid to grow to be up to 43 feet or 13 meters long from the tip of the top fin to the end of the longest tentacle. By comparison, squids that live in more shallow parts of the ocean only grow to be around 24 inches or half a meter long. The effects of increased pressure and oxygen on squids in the deep sea have caused them to grow 21 and a half times larger than the squids in shallow waters, where the pressure and dissolved oxygen levels are lower. Similar factors contributed to land animals being larger in the ancient past, when the air pressure and oxygen levels had been significantly greater than it is currently. As I had discussed earlier in the video, ancient bugs also grew to be far larger than their modern counterparts. The ancient ancestor of the modern scorpion, named the Pulmona scorpius kirtonensis, grew to have a thorax 28 inches long, which is just over 2 feet, not even including the length of the tail. Compared to the scorpions that we're familiar with today, that only grow to be around 3 inches long, these ancient scorpions are enormous. If a two-foot-long scorpion is not terrifying enough, there was another species of ancient scorpion, called the Brontoscorpio anglicus, that grew to have a thorax 3.3 feet long, not including the tail's length. Another large bug, but one that's virtually harmless to humans, is the millipede. The largest millipedes that exist currently can grow to be 13.2 inches in length, or just over one foot. This is thought to be large compared to other species of millipedes, which grow to be mere centimeters long. Ancient millipedes were much larger than the largest millipedes around currently. A species named Arthropleura grew to be 8.5 feet, or 2.6 meters. Thankfully, millipedes are herbivores, so despite their disturbing appearances, they would be unlikely to attack humans. An ancient ancestor of the modern-day dragonfly, called the Meganeropsis permiana, had a 28-inch wingspan. By comparison, the largest dragonflies that exist currently only have up to a 7-inch wingspan, making the Meganeropsis permiana over four times larger than the modern dragonfly. The largest tarantula that exists currently is the Goliath bird eater which can reach a body size of up to 4.75 inches. This may seem large, but an ancient tarantula species named Megarachna had a body length of 21 inches, which is almost 2 feet, and a leg span of 43 inches, which is over 3.5 feet wide, making the Megarachna over 4 times as wide as the largest modern tarantula. The largest modern ant is called the Dinoponera, and it can grow to be up to 1.6 inches long. This is certainly very large, compared to a common ant, which is only around a centimeter long. However, an ancient species of ant, named the Titanomerma lube, grew to be 2.5 inches long, and it also had enormous wings, with a span of 5 inches, which is almost half a foot wide. Ants this large would certainly ruin a picnic. The largest birds living on Earth currently include the ostrich, cassowary, and the shoebill, among others. But ancient birds reached even greater heights. The kalenken grew to be over 3 meters, or 10 feet tall, at the head, and had a huge beak compared to ostriches, which it could easily attack a human with. The Dinornis robustus grew to be almost 12 feet, or 3.6 meters, tall making it over twice as tall as the average person. The Pelagornis had a wingspan of up to 7.3 meters, or 24 feet long, which is four to five times longer than the average height of an adult human. The largest terrestrial animal to have existed is currently believed to be a dinosaur called the Patagotitan maiorum. From head to tail, it reached a length of 40 meters, or 131 feet long. No land animal is close to reaching the height of this dinosaur. From the ground to the dinosaur's head at resting level, ranged between 32 feet and 49 feet tall, or 10 to 15 meters. 
A giraffe, by comparison, is only around 4.5 meters or 15 feet tall on average, making the Patagotitan mayorum two to three times taller than a giraffe and four to five times taller than the modern elephant. Another ancient reptile related to modern lizards is called the Demetrodon. This creature was 11 and a half feet long, while a similar modern lizard, such as the sailfin chameleon, only reaches 10 inches in length, which is under a foot. The largest recorded snake from modern times is the reticulated python, which can grow to be 7.6 meters or 25 feet long. Movies have a tendency to exaggerate how large modern snakes like the pythons and anacondas are. However, an ancient extinct species of snake named the titanoboa was as large as some of the snakes shown in movies. The titanoboa has been recorded to be over 15 meters or 50 feet long, which is twice as large as the reticulated python. A snake this large would partially explain the appearance of ancient serpentine creatures such as Quetzalcoatl if ancient people saw it. Since all that remains is the skeleton of the serpent, it is possible that it could have had feathers also when it was alive. Just as paleontologists assert that several species of dinosaurs had feathers. Monitor lizards are a large reptile that exists in the modern day. The largest monitor lizards reach a length of 10 feet or 3 meters long, which is also the average size of a crocodile. Monitor lizards are a concern because their bites contain a substance that completely paralyzes prey only a few minutes after being bitten. It's capable of immobilizing deer, water buffalo, and even humans using this tactic. While the prey is immobilized, the monitor lizard consumes the prey even though they're still alive. The ancestor of the monitor lizard, called the Megalania, likely did the same thing to prey. The Megalania would be able to consume much larger prey with ease though, because it was 23 feet or 7 meters long. Moving on to hopefully more peaceful creatures, the ancient ancestor of the sea turtle, named the Archelon Iskaros, was around 12 feet in diameter, which is four times larger than the modern sea turtle, which is only three feet wide. The largest modern tortoises are three feet tall and five feet wide, while ancient tortoises called the Megalocalis atlas were six feet tall and nine feet wide, making them twice as tall as a modern tortoise. Contrasting greatly with the peaceful tortoise, an enormous reptile that lived primarily underwater named the Pliosaurus funke, and often referred to as Predator X, was over 42 feet or 13 meters long, which is over four times as large as the average crocodile. Predator X had a skull that was 8 feet or 2.4 meters long, which is about 30% larger than a human is tall. According to studies, Predator X's bite was over 10 times more powerful than any modern animal's and four times the bite force of a T-Rex, making it probably the most dangerous creature in ancient oceans. A flying reptile called Quetzalcoatlus northropi was around 20 feet or 6 meters tall from head to foot, making it the same height or taller than a modern giraffe. They had a wingspan of 11 meters or 36 feet, but the wings themselves are too narrow to allow the Quetzalcoatlus to fly in the modern atmosphere, which is not dense enough. The ancient atmosphere, however, with the increased air pressure and buoyancy from perpetually high humidity and density, would have enabled the Quetzalcoatlus to fly, even with its disproportionately narrow wings. You may have noticed that many of these ancient animals look somewhat different compared to their modern versions in addition to just their size. This is due to the process of speciation, in which animals gain or lose traits to better adapt to their environment. For example, bears that live in colder climates with less vegetation have adapted to be larger and faster, with sharper teeth to consume animals in addition to plants, and they have developed hibernation patterns to withstand the winters. Bears that settled in vegetation-rich, warmer areas like China adapted to consume the abundant bamboo with wider, flat teeth. 
both grizzly bears and panda bears originated from a common ancestor, and speciation caused the bears to develop different traits to suit their new environments. The process of speciation also occurred to the descendants of these originally giant animals. The larger creatures, like the ancient ancestors of elephants, over time became smaller and inhabited other areas. Those that migrated to warmer regions, such as Africa and Southeast Asia, were able to survive. On the other hand, those that speciated and migrated to northern climates most likely went extinct due to being one of the few convenient sources of food for predators, in contrast to the elephants in the warmer climates that were just one of the many potential sources of food for large predators. The mammoths were unable to prosper as long as their relatives in warmer climates due to the lack of food resources in the colder climates, further contributing to their extinction. Catastrophic environmental disasters in the ancient past removed the dense layer of water vapor that had once been in the atmosphere, and with it, lowered the air pressure, oxygen, and carbon dioxide levels. Plants had difficulty growing afterwards, leading to major food shortages. Due to drastic atmospheric and environmental changes, animals needed to evolve and adapt to these dramatically different conditions compared to the environment that they had been previously used to. Only the smaller offspring of these animals were able to survive the lack of food and breathable air, with speciation causing these once large species to give way to smaller descendants. While the species that could not adapt sufficiently to the new environment perished. This includes the dinosaurs. The colder climate and less dense atmosphere also made it difficult for such large reptiles to survive, which caused the dinosaurs to go extinct. The sea level atmosphere currently is very similar to the summit of mountains in the distant past, due to there being less oxygen, lower air pressure, colder temperatures, and the air is much less dense than it was in the ancient past. These conditions also lead to quicker dehydration, since the air is so dry now compared to the ancient atmosphere. Even though the climate used to be far more pleasant, there were many negative aspects to living long ago. Enormous and dangerous creatures were everywhere, and they were very capable of attacking or even eating people if they wanted to. Even worse, it was common to see bugs even larger than humans, and swimming in the ocean, lakes, and rivers would be very undesirable too, because of the oversized sharks, aquatic arthropods, and piranhas. The sky was not safe either, because Quetzalcoatlus, larger than giraffes, were flying around, as were insects with huge wingspans. Since most people are comfortable enough with the current atmospheric conditions, it's considerably more desirable to live now with smaller and less dangerous animals. If you would like to learn more about the changes in the Earth's climate that happened in the ancient past, refer to my video titled A Divided World. This video was produced with the generous support of my Patreon community, Debbie, Crystal West Cleaning, Jeffrey Schellenberg, Joseph Thompson, Ablobonic, Adam Walker, Liam Flatley, and The Biggest Birdie. And a big thank you also to those who have supported Shattered History with YouTube's Super Thanks option, Lumen 8R, Anthony Williams, Skyathos, Lindsay K, Andrew Hessling, Debbie, and Prada GT.